All right, so we're going to do some more examples from the lecture today. So here what we want to do is we want to plug in uh, negative 6 and do that as our divisor. So negative 6 into, we have a 5, a negative 4, a 3, negative 2, a 1, and a negative 1. All right, so hopefully we left enough space. So that's going to be 5 multiply negative 6 times 5. That's going to be a negative 30. And add those, negative 34. Now I multiply that, that's going to be, and I'm going to use my calculator, 6 times 34 is going to be 204. Add that, that's going to be 207. And so 207 times a negative 6 is going to be negative 1242. Plus that is going to be negative 1244. And then we we'll multiply that times negative 6. That's going to be a positive 7464. Plus 1 is 7465. And then we're going to multiply that times a negative 6. And we we'll get negative 44. Uh, 790, so it's going to give us negative 44, 791. And so f of minus 6 is going to be negative 44, 791. And so that would be our answer. So this is the case where it kind of gets ridiculously big, and so we get a big number. So I'm not sure if just plugging this into the calculator might be easier, or doing it this way to show that you know how to use the remainder theorem is easier. So that's how we would do that one. All right, so here we want to use the factor theorem to find all real zeros uh, given the factor and the function. So what we're going to do basically is we're going to use our k is equal to 3 and do in synthetic division. And so we have a 3, a 2, we're missing the uh, x, so we'll have a minus 5, a 16, a 0, and a minus 9. So we bring down that, that's going to be a negative 5. It gives us a negative 15. Add that, that's 1. Multiply there, that's 3. Uh, add that, that's 3. Multiply that, that's 9. Add that, that's 0. So we have x equals uh, 3 as one of our uh, fact, uh, zeros. Now this one is going to be an x squared, an x, and then the number. And so we have a minus 5x squared, and then plus x, and then uh, plus 3. And so what do we want to do with that? Well, can we factor that? Fives and threes, and I don't think it's factorable. So I'm going to use x equals minus b, so minus 1, and then plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 1 squared minus 4 times a, which is minus 5, and then times the uh, 3 all over 2 times that, which is a negative 5. Now we're going to simplify. And so we have 4 times 5 is 20. It's positive. Times 3 is 60 plus 1. So that's going to be a minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 61 all over negative 10. Now I'm going to simplify this. I'm going to divide the top by a negative so I can have a positive in the denominator. And so that's going to be uh, 1 plus or minus the square root of 61 over 10. And so then I have those two roots. So then I have x equals a 1 plus the square root of 61 over 10. And I have x equals 1 minus the square root of 61 over 10. So I've got my three roots, which I'm expecting because I have a degree of 3. And those are the three roots that I come up with. Okay. All right, so here we're supposed to use Cauchy's bound to determine the interval that contains all the real zeros. So again, we're going to take the absolute values over of the each of the coefficients divided by the absolute value of the a sub n, our first term. And so when we do that, we're going to have uh, 20 over 2. We'll have 49 over 2. We'll have 19 over 2. And now we just have to kind of decide which one's bigger. Well, that's 10. And 49 divided by 2 is 24 and a half, I believe. Yeah, 24 and a half. And 
19 divided by 2 is going to be uh, 9 and a half. So our interval, our largest one is this, so that's m. Remember, our interval is going to be from minus m plus 1. So 24.5 plus 1 is going to be 25.5 to the positive 25.5. And so we know all of our zeros that we do find should be within this uh, interval here that's given. Okay, and that's using again Cauchy's bound, where you have to find the largest m, where the m's are going to be the coefficient of each of the uh, terms leading up to the nth term, all over the coefficient of the nth term. Again, absolute values of each of those. All right. So use rational zeros theorem to make a list of all possible rational zeros. And so on this one, what we need to do is basically we need to um, find the p's over the q's, okay? So when we do that, what do we have? Our p's are the 20. And so when we factor those, that's gonna be two and 10, two and five. And so then when we also have, you know, the four and five, um, then we'll also have, you know, uh, if we think about that, that's five and one. So we have the ones in there. Um, so we have ones, the fours, the tens, the twenties. I think we have all of those. Now the Q's, that's the two. So that's basically one and two. So now we want to take each one of the P's divided by each of the Q's. So we'll have plus or minus. Now if we do all over the twos first to get our fractions, uh, we'll have one over two, and then we'll have two over two, which is also one half. So oh, let's just write them and then we can have it, uh, or is equal to one, so we'll just write them all. And then we'll have four over two, and then we'll have five over two, and then over there, what else do we have? Four, five, 10 over two, and then plus or minus 20 over two. Uh, so 20, four, five, I think that might be all of those. And then we just have all of the things on the numerator over one, so then we have plus or minus one, uh, plus or minus two, plus or minus four, plus or minus five, plus or minus 10, plus or minus 20. Now we need to simplify two over two is one. We've got one there, so we can kind of drop that one off. Four over two is two. We've got two right there, so we can drop that off. Five over two we can keep. 10 over two is five, so we can drop that off because we've got the five. 20 over two is 10. We've got the 10, so we can drop that off. So it looks like our list is going to be plus or minus the half, and then one, and then if we do, you know, one next, and then two, then two and a half, then four, five, ten, and twenty, all of them plus or minuses. Okay, I think I've got all of those. And so all it's asking for the possible list of zeros, and so that would be our possible list there. Okay, now if we had to actually find them, that would be. We start at the lowest, work our way up until we get to the highest one doing all our synthetic division. All right, so this one is, says do the same thing, find all the possible zeros, but then they want us to actually find those zeros, okay? Well, so when we do that, we're gonna do the same thing we just did as far as our P's and our Q's go. And so um, our P's in this case are going to be uh, pl let's see, one and two and three and six, factors of six, and our Q's are just gonna be one and three. So now we're gonna take all those divided by all of those. So plus or minus P over Q is equal to plus or minus. Now we have one plus or minus two plus or minus three plus or minus six, and then plus or minus one over three plus or minus two over three plus or minus three over three, which is just one, so we won't do that. And then six over three is two, so we won't do that. And so that looks to be then our actual list. We don't need that last plus or minus. 
All right, so that's our possibles. Now we need to find them. So now we just do synthetic division. And um, kind of like what I had said um, before, probably would be what I would do here. I would use um, the fractions first, and then I would do um, the whole numbers after that, just to kind of uh, see what we have. Now, what else can we do? Um, let's use the Descartes theorem and see the plus minus is to know how many of each we're gonna have of those possibly. So we'll have one change of sign here. So it's gonna be one possible positive. And if we change it, that's gonna be a negative x to the third and minus x squared and plus 11 x and then minus six. So there's gonna be one change, two changes. So it's gonna be either two or zero negatives. And so because of that, I'm going to take a big gamble and I'm gonna say, well, let's start with our negatives and then work our way to our positives just because there's possibility there's more of them. Now, if that's the case, you, you just never know. So I'm gonna work with the negative one third and then I'll keep going from there. So then we have our three minus one minus 11 minus six bring down our three, that's gonna give me a minus one, that's gonna give me a minus two, that's gonna give me a two thirds. Uh, multiply that by three over three, so we have a 33 minus two is gonna be 31, so minus 31 over three times that, it's gonna give me a, a positive 31 over nine. Those aren't the same, so that's not a factor. All right, how about a negative two thirds? And again, it's not always the case where the fractions are going to end up being first, but I always try to get the smallest ones done and then work my way up uh, the ladder. So then it's a 3 minus 1 minus 11 minus 6. So if I bring that down, uh, so I have that. That's going to give me a minus 2. That's a minus 3. Multiply that. The 3s cancel. It's positive. So it's going to be a 2. And that's going to be minus 9. That's going to be positive. 3 goes into 9 three times. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. So that one is a 0. So I have x equals a negative 2 thirds is a 0. And now here, I've got that's x squared. That's x. That's the number. Um, so yeah, so I don't know, 3x squared and then minus 3x and then minus 9 equals 0. So if I divide by 3, it makes it simpler. That's x squared minus x and then minus 3 equals 0. I don't know any factors there to get that. So uh, we're going to have to use the quadratic. So x equals minus b. So minus and minus 1 is 1 plus or minus the square root of that squared, which is one minus four times a times c, all over two times a. So minus four times a minus three is 12, plus one is 13. And so then I'll have one plus or minus the square root of 13 all over two. And so then my two uh, other terms or other zeros are gonna be x equals one plus square root of 13 over two and x equals one minus the square root of 13 over two. So that's my three zeros. I expect three zeros because of my degree. And so that would be what I have there for those. Okay, um, let's go on, see what we have for the next question. So now we're supposed to find all the complex zeros, so real and imaginary. So basically, um, when those happen, that usually means there are going to be some imaginary ones. And so let's go ahead and do those. Now, 85, we got to think about what the uh, ways to break up 85 are, because we have to find our p's and our q's. So 5 will go in there, 1, then that, so it's going to be 17. And so then the only other factor is going to be 1 and 85. So I think that's all we'll have. 1, 5, 17, 85. 
and then we have x is or p is one. So our plus or minus p over q is going to be plus or minus one, plus or minus five, plus or minus seventeen, and plus or minus eighty-five. All right. So uh, let's look at here. Uh, our positives. We have positive, 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 positive. So there's going to be zero positive zeros. So what if we change it to negatives? Well, that'll be a negative x cubed plus 13x squared minus 57x plus 85. So there's going to be 1, 2, 3. So it's going to be 3 or 1 negative. And so a 0. So that means I'm not even going to worry about the positives. I'm only going to start with the negatives. All right, so a negative 1. And then I have a 1, I have a 13, I have a 57, and I have an 85. Bring down my 1, multiply that, it's negative 1. Add those, I get 12. Subtra multiply those, I get negative 12. Subtract that, that's 45. That's going to be a negative 45. No. All right, so next one, 5. So negative 5. I have 1, I have a 13, I have a 57, and I have an 85. Bring down my 1, I have a negative 5. That's going to give me uh, 8. That's going to give me a minus 40. That's going to give me a 17. And remember, 5 times 17 is 85, so that's going to give me a minus 85. That's 0. So x equals a minus 5 is a 0. So I got my negative one, at least have one. Now can I factor the next one? That's going to give me x squared plus 8x plus 17. Uh, I don't know how to do that one, so we're going to have to use our quadratic again. So x equals a minus b, which is 8, plus or minus the square root of 8 squared is 64, minus 4 times 1 times, and then we have 17 all over, and then we have 2 times 1. All right, so 4 times 17 is negative uh, 68 plus that. So we're going to have an imaginary number here. x equals a minus 8 plus or minus the square root of a negative 4 over 2. And so that's going to be a minus 8 plus or minus, and the square root of 4 is 2, and we have an i also and over two, and now we can reduce, and that's gonna be a minus four plus or minus i. So my other roots are x equals minus four plus i, and x equals a minus four minus i. And again, we have our conjugates, which we expect, and then we have our negative zero here, and so we've got the three zeros, and we expect to have three zeros because of our n is equal to three. All right. All right, so here we're going to use Descartes' rule of sign. And again, a lot of these, you know, the order as far as how we do things and where we learned them, it, it really doesn't matter. It's kind of using everything all together. So this is just kind of uh, just testing your rule, rule remembering what is Descartes' rule of sign. All right, so we first go through and we check what f of x is. So we have one change here and we have one change here. So that's going to be two or zero positive zeros. Now if we find f of negative x, that's going to be negative x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5x plus 6. Now there's only going to be one change there of sign, so it's going to be one uh, negative zero. Now it just says find how many the max is and then graph to verify. So to graph to verify, we have to plug that into our calculator. So what we'll do is we'll go get our uh, calculator here. We'll have to clear that out. And now we have to remember what our uh, thing was. So that hopefully is, this is the one we were doing, x to the third, and then minus 2x squared, and then minus 5x, and then plus 6. Let's graph that. All right, so we have one negative here at negative 2, it looks like. 
And then we have two positives, one at one, one at four. So that's our three. So two positives, one negative. So what we have then is we have the, or my pen go, go oh, maybe it helps if I put it the other way. We have the two positives, one negative, and so that's what we end up with. And so that's how we would verify that we did have the proper number of uh, positives and negatives. All right, so the last thing we're gonna look at are a couple of applications again. And so again, the first one we're gonna do dimensions of a box. So we have a length three meters more than the width. The width is two meters more than the height. Find the, uh, each of those when the volume is equal to 120. And so I'm going to this time, it looks like everything's in terms of width. So I'm gonna say W is equal to width. And then what do I say? The length is three meters more than width. So length equals width plus three. And then what does it say about the height? The width is two meters more than it is high. So height is equal to W minus two. So if I subtract the two meters off the width, that's gonna give me my height. So now I've got length, width, and height all in terms of W. And so my volume, which is 120, is equal to the width times the width plus three times the width minus two, okay? So I need to square or multiply those together with FOIL and then I can go ahead and take it times W. So that's gonna give me W squared plus W minus six. And that's still 120. And so I'm gonna take it over to the right side this time and I have zero equals. That's gonna be W cubed plus W squared minus six W minus 120. So now I've got that. Okay, what do we know about boxes and stuff? Measurements always are gonna be positive. So our P over Q, all we have to worry about is the positive ones. Um, our Q, P is 120. So we're gonna have a lot of terms here. So you know we'll have one and 120. And so let's start here, two and 60, two and 30, two and 15. And then we'll have three and five. Of course, there's gonna be a one and a five here. And so then we have other pieces. So we'll have uh, four and 30, and we'll have, uh, let's see. Um, so two and 60, do we have 60? Yeah, two and 60, so those two. Three and 40, we just did four, or three and 40. Do we have 40? We don't have 40, three and 40. Um, five goes in there, so it's gonna be what? Uh, five goes in there 24 times. And then six goes in, so we'll have a six also. Uh, so let's bring those over, so six and 20. Um, let's see, eight uh, will go, because we have two times two times two, so we'll have eight. So we'll have an eight and uh, let's see, one, four, five, 15. All right, so hopefully that's gonna be all of them. So if we write all those out, P over Q, all positive, all over one. So what we'll have is one, two, three, four, five, six, no sevens, we'll have eight. Uh, no, no, let's see, nine, no nines, uh, but we'll have a 10, we'll have a 12, uh, we'll have a 15, uh, the 20, the 24, what else is up there, uh, 30, um, 40 was up there, uh, 60, and I think 120. I think that should be all of them. So quite a few. All right. So what am I going to do? What am I going to do is just start at the one and work my way up. And hopefully before I hit 120, I'll have the one that we're needing. All right. So I think probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to skip over and do some on another page because I don't think I left myself enough room. So we'll have one and then we have a one, a one, a minus six and a minus 120.
So that's a one, that's a one, that's a two, that's a two, that's a minus four, that's a minus four, that's a no. So two. One, one, minus six, minus one, 20. One, two, three, six, zero, zero, no. Three. One, one, minus six, minus one, 20. Bring down the one, three, four, 12, minus six, minus 18, no. All right, four. One, one, minus six, minus one, 20. Bring down the one. And that's gonna be four, a five, a 20, 14, uh, 56, no. All right, let's see if we can get a five here. All right, one, one, minus six, minus one, 20. Bring down our one, that's a five, that's a six, uh, that's a 30, that's a 24, that's gonna be 120, haha, we got one. So width is equal to five, and its units is meters. And our length is equal to W, which is five plus three, so that's eight meters. And our height is uh, five minus two, so that's gonna be three meters. So now if we multiply all that together, eight times five is 40, times three is 120, that's what we get. And so that looks like we should have the correct answer there. So only five synthetic divisions we had to do. We didn't have to do all however many there are here, quite a few. Okay, so again, sometimes finding all the ones here is going to be the hard part, and so you might miss one every once in a while, and, and if you say missed the, I don't know, if you missed the five here, you'd be in big trouble, because you would get all the way to the end before you would actually find out you don't have the right one, um, so, but yeah, if you're, if you miss some, that's going to be a problem, so really, if you have to, use your calculator to figure out, make sure you have all the uh, P's, or P's and Q's if you don't have a Q equal to one. All right, so the next one, find the dimensions of the right circular cylinder. The radius and height differ by one meter. The radius is larger and the volume is 48 pi. So what do we know about volume? Volume equals pi r squared times h. And so here, if we let h equal the height, r is larger, so the radius and height differ by one. So if we take h plus one, that would be equal to r. So now we can plug everything in. So we have 48 pi equals pi times r, which is h plus one squared times h. So we know if we divide by pi on one side, it cancels on the other side. And so this gives us h squared plus two h plus one, and then times h. Now, the next time if I take the 48 across, I'll have zero equals h cubed plus two h squared plus h minus 48. Now, 48, we have to break apart. So that's two and 24, and that's gonna be two and 12, and that's gonna be three and four, and that's gonna be two and two. And so we'll also have six and eight, and here we'll have uh, four and 12, and we'll have eights and sixes and fours. Um, what else do we have? If we have? We have a three. Okay, yeah, we've got a three and 16 and fours. So we got 12, we have 24. I think we have all of them now. So eight, or the Q is one. So we have a height again. So we're only gonna look at positives. So P over Q is gonna be, we have a one, a two, a three, a four, no fives, but we do have six, no sevens, but we do have eight, uh, no nines, we have a 12 though. Uh, then we have four and four, 16, and then 24 and 48. And I think that's all of them on this one. All right, so uh, what we'll do is again, start with the smallest, work our way up. So let's start up here so we have extra room. One, two, one, minus 48. Bring down our one. One times one is one. 
and that's three. Multiply that by one is three. That's four, that's four, that's no. So let's do two. One, two, one, minus 48. Bring down our one. That's two, that's four, that's eight, that's nine, that's 18, that's no. All right, how about three? One, two, one, minus 48. That's one, so that's gonna give us a three, that's a five, that's 15, that's 16. Three times that is 48. Oh, I think we have what we want, zero. So we've got, in this case, it was H. So H is equal to three, and we have meters. And our radius is one more than that, so that's four meters. How does that work? If we plug it in here, four squared is 16, times three is 48, times pi is equal to 48 pi cubic meters. And so that then is our actual uh, solution three and four for R and H backwards though. All right, that's all I have. Hopefully that would help you with some extra questions.